Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this particular video, uh, we are going to talk about how exactly the scheduling happens in the Kubernetes. So this is uh, another interesting video in the Kubernetes playlist. So let's talk about, so there are multiple scheduling options are available, okay? But let's first of all understand why uh, there is a need of a scheduling. Right? Why we can't have a default scheduling? Okay. Why we need more control in the scheduling? Right. So uh, we already talked about a Kubernetes cluster. Right. So let's consider this is your Kubernetes cluster, which has let's say uh, hundred nodes. Okay. Which has hundred nodes. So now the default scheduler that we have, how it works? Basically, we have to uh, define. Uh, any object YAML, right? For example, let's say we are creating a pod. So we'll just write a YAML for that. And this request will reach to the scheduler, right? Now I'm not talking about any other object because here we are just specifically talking about a scheduling concept. There are a lot of other components also involved. For that, we have a, other videos we already talked about in the architecture part. So here we are specifically talking about the scheduling, right? So whenever we write any manifest file for to deploy any application, when that request goes to the scheduler, what scheduler does? The default scheduling, how it works basically on the basis of available resources, right? So let's say we have 100 nodes available, 100 worker nodes are available. So out of that, whichever node has the best resources out of that 100, that node will be chosen by this scheduler and your pod will get created on that node. Let's say this is the node. Okay, so your pod will get created. This is the default scheduling works. But now let's talk and uh, let's talk about an example. <clears throat> now let's say I have an application, okay? And for that application, I want to deploy it as a pod. But this application, will only work if we deploy that application on a node which has SSD memory, okay? We know that SSD memory is a memory where application can run very fast because this memory is very fast where a read write happens very fast, right? So now for our application, let's say we need this SSD memory, then only that application will work fine, right? Now, SSD memory is costly, okay? So, it might not be possible to have SSD on all the 100 nodes, right? Why so? Because, let's say, instead of 100, only on, let's say, this two node, you have SSD memory, right? In that case, when this pod v, uh, this comes to the scheduler, getting scheduled your application on these two nodes it's just a 2% probability, right? Because out of 100, your pod will get scheduled on these two nodes only 2% 2, 2 times out of 100, right? So your pod might get scheduled on any of the node out of this 100 with a default scheduling, right? So if your pod gets scheduled on some other node which does not have a SSD memory, in that case, your application will not work. Okay, your application will not work, right? So in that case, that is where we need more control in the scheduling, okay? Where by using that control, we should be able to schedule our pod on a node which has this SSD memory, right? So how we can do that? So for that, basically, uh, Kubernetes has multiple mechanisms, right? And out of that, one mechanism we have is called as a node selector. We have one mechanism called as a node selector. Now, how this node selector mechanism works? Basically, in a node selector, what we do, first of all, we label the node, okay, with uh, some specific properties, right? So labeling the node is nothing but adding some label on that node. Okay, and uh, we add that label, it's something like a key is equal to value. Okay, something like this, we do the labeling. Like for example, if this two node, I want to label it as a, that they have the SSD memory. 
So I can label them something like this, HDD is equal to SSD. So we'll first of all label these two nodes with a labeling HDD equal to SSD. And then whenever we write a pod definition, in that pod definition, we, we can add one node selector section where we'll specify HDD equal to SSD. Okay, this kind of a section will add it into the pod definition. Now, when this request goes to the scheduler, now scheduler will understand from this definition that I need to schedule this pod on a node having label HDD request is equal to SSD. So that time, instead of fetching all the node details and then finding the best node out of it, it will fetch only the node having this particular label. So this time, these two nodes will be returned. And then out of these two nodes, whichever is best, your pod will get created on that node. And that's how we can get a more control on where we want to schedule our pod. But in any case, okay, at, in any case, let's say, for example, you define this case or this section into your pod, but there is no node available with a label. In that case, your pod will remain in a pending state. Okay, so that is something we have to make sure that if your uh, pod has some specific requirement and you are adding that labeling, we have to make sure that it is available on the node as well. If not, your pod will remain in a pending state. Okay, so we'll see this practically how we can do it. Okay, uh, before that, let me talk about another concept called as a node affinity. Okay, so just now we talked about a node selector. Okay, just now we talked about node selector, right? So both this node affinity and node selector, basically both are doing the same thing, okay? They are helping us in a scheduling our pods on a specific node, okay? Only difference is here, in a node selector, it's a, we just add a simple key value, okay? Simple key value, we add it. Okay, or a simple condition we can add it. But here in the node affinity, we can have a complex labeling. Okay, we can have a complex labeling. Okay, now what is the other difference? If let's say uh, due to some label mismatch, if your pod is not getting scheduled, right? Then in the node selector, it is easy to basically uh, identify. Okay, easy to debug, easy to debug. Right? Because here we have a simple labeling. It's easy to debug. But here we have a complex labeling. It's a difficult to debug if something is going wrong. Okay, Difficult to debug. But at the end, both these features are used basically for scheduling. If you need your part to be scheduled on a specific node, we should use this node affinity or a node selector concept. Okay, now how to do this practically, we'll see that, okay? So for that, I have a, already a one Kubernetes cluster ready. So I'll just quickly uh, start this cluster and then we'll see how we can do it, okay? Perfect, so I have a cluster ready. So let's see how we can uh, do it. Uh, this node selector and node affinity. So first of all, let's see the node selector, right? So now we have three nodes, the master node, and then we have two worker nodes, right? So now let's say I have this simple pod.yaml, okay? So this is a very simple pod.yaml, which is just uh, deploying an Nginx web application. Now this pod, let's say you want to deploy on a specific node, let's say on a kind worker, right? Because if we normally, if I try to create a pod, it will either get created on the kind worker or kind worker too. That's what the default scheduling is doing. But now if you want to do it on a specific node, kind worker, let's see how we can do with a node selector. Okay. So what we need to do is, first of all, we need to add the label on the node. Okay. So how to add it? So let me show you, first of all, the default labels that we have. So here you can see the last section. Okay. So these are some default labels we have on the nodes, right? 
so here you can see these are some default labels like the os the host name they are using right the architecture they are using these are some default labels uh, given to the nodes so how we can add this uh, add your our own node uh, label so let's see kubectl label what do you want to label a node what is the name of the node let's say kind worker so and to add the label we can use a key and value so let's say i'm using a key value as a std equal to ssd right so if i do it you can see it is saying labeled now if you want to see which label got added here you can see HDD equal to SSD is added here. Earlier it was not there, right? So just now we added it. So perfect. Now we are done with the labeling the node. Now, how we can add the node selector section? It's a very simple. The pod.yaml in the spec section, here we have a attribute called as a node selector. Okay, where we have to provide this label, whatever we added, HDD equal to SSD. That's it. So if I just save it. And let's try to create this pod. So kubectl apply hyphen f pod.yaml. So this pod should be created on the kind worker only. So how we can validate kubectl get pod. First of all, pod is getting created. See on which node it is created. You can use hyphen o wide. You can see it got created on the kind worker only. Right? Why it got created? Because it the labels on the node and the labels on the pod got match. Right? Now, to, just to show you the negative case, what I'll do is I'll just delete this pod. And then what I'll do is kubectl delete pod. Okay, pod name is first actually. So I'll delete the pod. I'll remove the label on the node. Okay, so how to remove the label? So whatever the command we used to uh, add the label, the same command, instead of key equal to value, we have to use key and then hyphen. This will remove the label, okay? So just to show you that label got removed, you can see here. Now we don't have HDD equal to SSD label. Perfect. Now let's try to create a pod. Okay, it's still in our pod.yaml. We have that selector. Card. Now, when we try to create it, now there is a no node with this HDD equal to SSD label. So in that case, our pod should not be in a running state. Okay, so let's see whether that's happening or not. So kubectl apply hyphen f pod.yaml. If I run it, pod got created. But if you see the status, that pod is in a pending state. Why it is in a pending state? We can describe the pod. kubectl describe the pod first. And here at the end, you can see scheduling is filled. Why so? Because zero out of three nodes are available. One node had a taint. So what is taint concept we'll see in some other video. And then other two pods did not match the pod, a node affinity or node selector. Okay. So right now we are just looking at the node selector concept. So here it is saying that node selector is not matched. Why it is not match? Just because there is no node with this label, right? Perfect. So I hope everyone is uh, clear with this concept. So let me first of all delete this pod, and I'll just quickly show you about the node affinity. So node affinity and uh, your node selector both are concept wise both same. Only thing is in the node selector we can add a simple labeling, and in the node affinity we have to add more complex uh, selection criteria so let me add it how to add this on the pod so pod.yaml here instead of this node selector criteria we have to add it's a more complex adding here logic here so first of all affinity then we add the selection node affinity okay then we have something called as a required during scheduling ignored during execution, okay? So that's the name of the attribute. Then we have something called as a node selector terms, okay? So here, I think we don't have a hyphen. It's not the list item. And then under node selector terms, we have match expressions. So here we have a hyphen, match expressions. And inside this match expressions, we have key. So key we are going to add is as a HDD. Then the operator, okay. In the operator, we have uh, n, and then we have a values, okay. Inside of values, we can have actually, here we can have a 
SSD. Perfect. So this is how we add it. Basically, if you see that we are doing same thing, but it's a more complex addition. And here you can see we can add a multiple match expressions because this is a list. So we can add as many as key value, whatever you want. Right. So perfect. So we added it. Let me just save this. Before that, let me add the label. Okay, so I'm just adding the label because if for our earlier example, we have removed it. So I'm adding the label and then let's try to create a pod. So I hope I have deleted the old pod. So let's create it. Give CTL apply hyphen app pod.yaml pod got created and where it got created. If you want to see, you can use hyphen O by and it should be on the kind work, right? Why it got created on the kind worker again? Because now the labels are matching, right? So that's it for this topic. I hope everyone understood what is the, how to create a node selector and node affinity. It's a very simple concept. If you need more control in the scheduling of your pod, you can use this scheduling mechanism, either node selector or node affinity. Perfect. So that's it for this video. I hope everyone uh, understood this concept. If you have any queries, please put it in a comment. I'll surely answer that. And uh, if you like the video, please share it with your network. If you are not subscribed to the channel yet, please do subscribe. Thanks, everyone.